Best of r slash tales from retail episode 99. Subscribe for edit videos daily. The thief will be Jane. Me will be me and Junior. Will be Jean's daughter. All names mentioned in this story are randomly generated a. K. A. Not the real names. It was a fine morning. At this point I had just become 17 and I was working to get new pens and stuff. I wasn't having a good day then I talked to Jane. At first. She seemed like your average mom of three kids. She was chatty and I was feeling better because she was nice. I was about to let her go until I saw her daughter Janiya. Sneak in a doll. I forgot what brand. And I called her attention. Me. Hey. Your daughter put a doll in. I'll process it. Jane. What? No. She didn't. Me. Yes. Yes she did. Look at your bag. Jane and I went back and forth for a while and I noticed Junior. Just watching. Me. Mom. Please let me scan it or put it back. Then Jane finally revealed that she knew what her daughter did and when she realized what she did, she just started running. I finished the last few things for others, closed my lane and then chased after her. She escaped successfully but I later told the manager what she and her daughter looked like and everything in her personal life she talked about. She is honestly, the worst shoplifter ever. Like 4 weeks later. She comes back in, she was a bit different about her and it wasn't just clothing. She shoplifted again but she sharpened up and became an average shoplifter in skills. She was caught again but this time stealing phones. I don't know what happened to her but she was caught and had to pay properly and that's all I know. Thank you. Next. Disclaimer. First time posting, and also using mobile, so I apologize if formatting is weird. I used to work in a local hardware store. And one service we offered was selling slash cutting plexiglass to size. A woman came in asking for a piece of plexiglass cut to cover her driver side front window because it had shattered and she didn't have the time or money to replace it properly at that time. The woman will be W, me will be me, and my shift manager will be SM. The interaction went like this. Me. Hi. Welcome to local hardware store. How can I help you? W. I need a piece of plexiglass cut to cover my broken car window until I can get it fixed. Me. I think we can help you with that, but it can only be used to cover the hole. I don't believe it will work like a regular car window. Let me double check with my manager. I call my manager and he confirms that plexiglass cannot function like tempered auto glass and it can only be taped over the hole. The woman agrees to this and I measure and cut the glass to fit the window. Also. Plexiglass is a bitch to cut in curved lines. A woman pays for the glass and cutting labor, and leaves. A few hours later she returns with the plexiglass broken in half, and asks us to replace it. W. This plexi you sold me broke when I was putting it in, I want it replaced. Me. Thinking maybe it was damaged when I cut the curved edge. Sure, let him just get my manager to authorize the exchange. How did it break? W. Well it fit in the window slot fine, but as soon as I tried to roll the window down, it broke. Me. As the SM walks up, Mom, I told you when I cut this earlier it can't be installed and function like a car window, it was only to cover the opening. W. You never said that. I just want another piece of glass. SM. Mom. I can assure you we said not to put this plexiglass in like your regular window. I can exchange it for another piece. But only if you use it to cover the opening, not as a full replacement window. W. No. I just want a piece of plexiglass for my window. SM. Now fed up with her arguing. Mom. That will not work. Plexiglass is not strong enough to use in a car window. I would be happy to give you a refund. Or you can keep the broken pieces. But I will not replace that plexiglass for you. The woman slams the plexiglass on the floor. Breaking it into several more pieces. W. Fine. I'm leaving. And you're never going to get business from me or anyone I know, ever again. SM. Oh no, that's too bad. Me. Have a nice day. And she stormed out yelling all the way to her car. It was winter too. I hope she enjoyed her cold drive home. Thank you. Next. Hello y'all got a relatively short one for you. The cast is just me and one customer, which will be C. I work at a sort of small grocery store with just 10 aisles and a produce section. Only around 30 people in the store at a time, so not much going on. We had no stock that night thanks to our trucks all being delayed or rerouted, 
and so I was mopping in our canned goods section. A woman came up to me with a huff, and rudely asked, See hey, I've been looking all over the store for toilet paper, and I can't find any. Me I'm sorry mom, but we are completely out of toilet paper. If you really need it you can check out store or other store to see if they have any. See I already went there, they didn't have any. They said you did, so where is it on the shelves? Me I'm sorry mom but they must have told you wrong. We don't have any, and haven't for a day or two. See scoffs impossible. Go and check the back. I'll wait right here. So I smiled and plodded to the back to be greeted with the empty room where our stock pallets would normally be. I waited a couple seconds, then turned around and went back to her. See well, where is it? I need brand in 24 packs. Me again mom I'm sorry, but we don't have any toilet paper. I don't know when we will get more in. Our trucks are being delayed and furthermore, much of our product is on back order. See well I still need brand so. Me standing, smiling awkwardly wanting her to just leave. See you're not going to go get it? Me I just said we don't have any. I'm sorry mom but you'll have to come back another time. See you can't be serious. This is the only day I have to shop. Me sorry, but we just don't have an emo. See cutting me off stop giving me that excuse where is it? Me fine. It's a few sections over, middle shelf on the left. Good luck. See finally, thank you, I'll just get it myself. She then walked away as I went back to cleaning my section. For a moment there was silence, then an exasperated gasp and quick footsteps approaching me. I braced myself, and as she rounded the corner I strained to wear my best smile. See I can't believe you, telling me wrong. I'll just take my business elsewhere. She then stormed out of the building, and I haven't seen her since, thank goodness. It's been a couple days and we still don't have any toilet paper. Thankfully our local chain retailer got whole pallets of it in, but none for us. Hopefully all of you in the comments have had better luck. Thank you, next. Alright, this is my most recent tale. Saint will be spoiled teen, me will be me and B will be street's little brother. By the way, Saint and B's family is very rich because he had driven to my store with a car. I was walking around the store, helping customers then B comes over to me. Me, oh, hello, B, can I have some candy? Me, sure, what candy do you want? At this point, Saint started to walk over to B. B, C, Saint. The nice lady said I could have some candy. Saint, no she didn't, now let's get out of here. Saint dragged B by his arm roughly and B looked more scared than sad. I knew it was wrong but I used my break to follow Saint and B because Saint looked very suspicious. And wouldn't you know it, Saint was buying drugs. He bought some and was starting to walk back into the store. I walked back in and since drugs aren't legal here, I called the police. I described him and specified that he had a very young brother. Saint left B alone again. I gave B some money to spend on candy and I had a plan. I would use the candy to gain his trust and use that to interrogate him, nicely of course. Me, what did your brother buy? B, he bought some mad powder. It went like that and I finally had enough info. I found out his brother had symptoms of bipolar disorder. B and Saint left the store soon after that. I'm pretty sure he got arrested after that. Thank you, next. So I work in a very popular shop in the UK a bit like Sephora. Anyway, this story contains me and a very nasty mother who we'll call W for which. So we had opened 3 minutes ago and there was already a queue a mile long on the main tills. Now I don't normally work on them as I have my own zone. We currently have a limit on how many paracetamol you can buy at one time. This also includes children's medicine. So, W comes to my till with Calpol and 2 packs of paracetamol. Me. Hi. Sorry, just to let you know you're only allowed one item that contains paracetamol today. W. Fine. Get rid of one of my packs then. M. Calpol actually contains paracetamol so you're going to have to choose. W. Wait. You're going to make me choose between my health and my child's health? I just stand there without saying anything. W. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're disgusting. How dare you. At this point she's screaming at me. I try and stay calm, no point in getting angry, and I would probably get reprimanded if I spoke back. W. I guess I'll take my paracetamol then, 
and she threw the calpel at me. I quickly scanned her up and let her stomp her way out of the store. She didn't even say goodbye to me. I hate people. Thank you. Next. So I work at a grocery store as the grocery department manager. I'm over dry grocery, dairy, frozen and natural foods. As you all know these last two weeks have been absolutely insane for grocery stores. We're out of a lot and it's taking a while for things to get back in. We're finding alternatives to give our customers something to buy, even if it's not their usual choice. One of these is water. When crap really started hitting the fan, the first thing to go, after toilet paper, was multi-pack water. It became increasingly hard to get our brand in, so I got with my Coke slash Dr. Pepper slash Pepsi vendors and had them bring in the national brands. The next day, an angry customer approached me. So I see you guys have no problem profiteering off of this emergency. He said this loudly, with an accusatory gotcha tone. What do you mean? I asked him, genuinely confused. Yesterday your water was $2.99. Today it is $6.99. Well, sir, this isn't the water we norma. I can't believe you guys would jack your prices up like this. I'm calling the... He turned to his wife. Who is it? The Better Business Bureau? He turned back to me. The Better Business Bureau. Sir, you can call whoever you want. We haven't changed our prices. Our cheaper brand of water is unavailable for the foreseeable future. So we brought in the national brand so we'd have water for you to buy. Well why isn't IT the same price as yours? If you came in here wanting ground beef, and we were out of ground beef, you wouldn't expect me to sell you filet mignon at ground beef price, would you? Dot. The national brands have always been this price. Sorry it's more expensive than you're used to, but it's the only water we can get in right now. He bought our limit of two and walked away without another word. Thank you. Next. Time for another story from my time at a big box home improvement store. Like the rotary tool story I shared last month. This took place at my first of two locations with the company that is in a fast growing college town. The first of the store's menace spring sales had just kicked off, and I was working the garden center register to help out the cashiers. One of the items included at the was cypress mulch, priced at 5 bags for $10. About 30 minutes after hopping back on the register after my lunch break, a textbook Karen enters my line. Knew she was trouble as soon as she raged at me about there being a shortage of carts. We were running through them faster than the single lot guy we had that afternoon could replenish them. Her turn in line came, and she told me the amount of mulch she wanted. I rang her up after looking toward the location of the mulch to make sure we had enough, as we were starting to run low. Could have sworn I saw an extra pallet, but boy was I wrong. The garden associate informed we we were out of the mulch while pushing a cart of mulch for a different customer to the registers. At this point things went straight to hell. Me, mom, I have just been told that we are out of the mulch. I apologize for any convenience. Karen, what the hell are you talking about? That guy, garden associate, has a cart full of it. Me, mom, that mulch belongs to another customer. Karen, I don't give a fk who it belongs to. Give me that mulch. Me, no mom, I will not give you another customer's product. Karen, excuse me? Spoken in the most condescending tone imaginable. Me, that mulch has been paid for and belongs to another customer. I will not be giving it to you under any circumstances. Karen, storming off. You people are a fking joke. At this point she proceeds to hop into her rather nice SUV and execute a 3 point burnout turn, followed by speeding out of the parking lot. It's too bad the police weren't cruising through the parking lot at this time, as they would do every so often. A reckless driving ticket would have been poetic. Me, the garden associate, and the other customers in line stared in stunned silence for a bit. Resume checking people out, and all of them promised to say excellent things about me on the survey. My ratings were excellent the next week, so they must have made good on their promises. In this instance, Karen never came back to get the mulch she paid for.